This is Beijing's smallest, exquisitely decorated loft. Come and see. This is upstairs. The width of this is about one meter. The depth of the inside is about two meters. What do you think? Not bad, right? The upper bunk has the air conditioning, lights, enough room for it. This is the second floor. Then let's look at the first floor. On the first floor, there is a fridge, an induction stove, an electric rice cooker, an electric heater, and these cabinets. It's kind of luxurious, not bad at all. There's no water in the room. But first, let's have a look at the sink. The sink is here. The sink is shared, and it doesn't get frozen in winter, so it's okay. Then there is access to a washroom. Follow me. The washroom is very close. The cleanness isn't bad. How many people are staying here? Two, husband and wife. They came to Beijing for their kid to seek medical treatment. In Beijing, a home like this can't afford to be demolished because every inch of land is gold. This is a school district, next to which is a middle school and a prestigious elementary school. There are a number of family homes at the level of ministries and commissions. It's close to the financial street as well. How do you think it can be demolished? This home is just two square meters in total. It takes about ten minutes to walk to the children's hospital. That's why a couple is living here for their kids' medical treatment. Why not stay in a hotel? A hotel? Do you know how much hotels cost in this area? There is a children's hospital here, and the hospital is a cash cow. Near the hospital, businesses like flowers, fruits, restaurants, hotels are making a fortune. In this neighborhood, even shabby hotels, which are worse than the fast hotel chain, cost more than 300 yuan a night. How can you afford to stay in a hotel? If it costs 300 yuan a night, when you see a doctor for a month. The hotel cost will be nine thousand yuan. If you see a doctor for two or three months, twenty thousand to thirty thousand yuan will be gone. How can you afford to stay in a hotel? Hotel costs plus medical expenses will drain all your family's money, so they can save a little by staying here. Everyone's life is very difficult, eh? The smallest home in Beijing is a reflection of China's dysfunctional real estate industry. For the past thirty years or so, China's housing prices have been high. Let's look at the data of 2017 before the epidemic. According to data from Wind, the housing price to income ratio is over ten times in sixteen of China's provincial capitals, municipalities directly under the central government, and Shenzhen Special Administrative Region. It's three to six times higher than the international reasonable range. In addition, housing prices in first-tier cities have doubled in the past six years, and second-tier cities have increased by about 50 percent. For an average Chinese working family, even a second-tier city, it would take more than 10 years without food and drink to afford a home. The ratio of housing price to income is the ratio of housing price to the income of urban residents. It's considered by the industry as one of the important indicators to measure the existence of a real estate bubble. At the time, a study by Longview Economics, a U.S. economic consulting firm, concluded that Shenzhen's housing-to-income ratio was as high as 70 times, making it the second most expensive city in the world, with a typical home costing around 800,000 U.S. dollars. The firm's report cites the same trend in Beijing and Shanghai, although the ratio wasn't as high as in Shenzhen. Are high housing prices a result of a shortage of homes in China? Not at all. For a long time, how many houses are in China has been an unsolved mystery. On February 15, 2023, the State Press Office held a news conference to present the first national comprehensive risk census of natural disasters. When answering reporters' questions, an official from China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development said that the census had, for the first time, comprehensively mapped out the state of the industry regarding China's real estate construction and municipal infrastructure. The official said, for nearly three years, the authorities have mobilized nearly five million professionals and technicians nationwide to participate in the census. 
Another official of the State Council introduced that the housing and urban rural construction industry has obtained data on nearly 600 million urban and rural buildings and more than 800,000 municipal infrastructures nationwide. When the Ministry of Housing and Construction announced that there were nearly 600 million residential buildings in the country, it shocked the public. Please note that this is 600 million buildings, not 600 million homes. One building contains multiple homes. One home usually accommodates three to four people or more. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, claims that China has a population of 1.4 billion, but the actual population is probably much smaller than that. Even if we take the 1.4 billion population as the basis, it is equivalent to one building for two people. With so many homes, why are housing prices so high? The main reason behind China's real estate bubble is that the Communist Party's land finance has driven up the cost of buying a home, making it unaffordable for people who actually need it. In addition, the Chinese people have almost no alternatives to invest, be it in the stock market or in various bank financial products. These options tend to be extremely risky, so real estate becomes the first choice for investment. In addition, the Chinese Communist government has over-issued a tremendous amount of money that has gone to the real estate sector, thus holding up real estate prices. From the central government to the local governments, they have been actively stimulating the real estate industry. Real estate drives infrastructure, employment, and the entire local finance. So the officials keep on stimulating the economy by promoting real estate. The future economy is being overspent in exchange for the present economic growth, and this kind of Ponzi scheme has been going on for 30 years. But such an economic structure can't be continued now. Because more and more homes are built, there are simply too many of them, and the price of housing gets so high that it can no longer support the market. Presumably, there are a lot of vacant homes in China, so who has the most of the surplus ones? Besides the investments of some rich people, there are probably many corrupt officials who are hoarding them. Moreover, in some provinces in China, such as Jiangsu and Zhejiang province, there are many ghost cities. The most typical one is Ordo City, Inner Mongolia. Why do local and central governments allow real estate developers to build so many ghost towns? Because the construction of homes requires land acquisition, the local government can get a lot of tax revenue and land transfer premiums in the process of selling land, thus realizing the financial revenue. And real estate developers can get loans from banks when buying land and building homes. This is why, in many cities in China, the same piece of land is demolished and built, built and demolished again. In announcing this figure of 600 million buildings in February 2023, the CCP is supposedly trying to cool down the real estate without taking too drastic of measures. Through this data, it's to let the public know that there are many empty homes so people can buy them for their own use, but should be more careful in investing. The public should be aware of the severity of the real estate issue, and then over time, the CCP hopes to diffuse the oversupply problem slowly. In other words, the Chinese government has been avoiding the problem of the real estate bubble, and the bubble is getting bigger and bigger. Now the government wants to prevent it from getting bigger, but not to the point of bursting the bubble. The bundling of local finance with the real estate sector is a major headache for the Chinese government and one that is difficult to solve. So far, the CCP has been unable to solve it and the real estate market could deteriorate further, hitting the Chinese economy hard. A 10 or 20% drop in China's housing prices would be an unbearable pain for the country and the entire population would be trapped in the property market. 
the national finance or local finance will be weighed down. After the Chinese government broke the news of 600 million buildings, it caused a sensation among the public. The internet responses have shown that people are very concerned about it. Many netizens commented on Weibo, if this number is true, it's scary. Based on 300 million buildings, if six-story buildings are counted as 12 households, a total of 3.6 billion households can be arranged. Please stop building and leave some farmland for future generations. Another comment read, Homes aren't selling, really. We have been killing chickens to get eggs. This round of bailouts will only make the real estate debt higher and make it more serious that the people of the country consume in advance an overdraft in the future. This round of massive printing of money will start to heat up by next year. Chinese netizens are also speculating that the CCP census, in addition to the officially claimed reason, has another purpose, which is to impose a real estate tax. On February 21st, a report published by NetEase verified netizens' speculations. The headline of this report read, the Ministry of Housing and Construction announced that it has found out the number of housing units in the country. There may be huge changes to regulate housing prices and introduce a property tax. The investigation was conducted under the name of the National Comprehensive Natural Disaster Risk Survey. The Chinese government spent a huge amount of effort to understand the basic situation of various disaster-bearing bodies and obtain detailed and massive fundamental data, but this basic data hasn't been released to the public. The reason is that once the data is released, the public will be able to see which cities have a serious imbalance between housing supply and demand. An excessive real estate bubble, seriously high housing prices, excessive pressure of population loss, etc. It's likely to trigger a wave of selling in cities with a serious housing surplus and a seriously high vacancy rate, or even a mass exodus of population, etc. But no matter how carefully the government covers it up, the trend that housing prices in China will fall is already inevitable. In 2020, the Chinese government introduced the three red lines to regulate the debt risk of real estate enterprises. Immediately afterward, the real estate sector began to break, resulting in a large number of unfinished construction. In 2023, the trend of uncompleted properties is getting more intensified. Recently, there has been an outbreak of cases where owners of unfinished buildings in Shanxi, Jiangsu, Sichuan, and Henan provinces are protesting to defend their rights. This is virtually the only way for them to seek justice. This is an unfinished construction site for Evergrande in Jiangsu province. Nearly all of the owners took out loans of about 180,000 to 200,000 US dollars and started repaying them in 2020, at which point they began to defend their rights. The owners have discovered that their down payment of 2 billion yuan or nearly 300 million US dollars to the Agricultural Bank of China hasn't been put into a supervised account for dedicated use, resulting in a halt to the construction of the project. This is a woman in her 30s crying on the roof of an unfinished building. She wants to defend her rights by jumping off the building. The number of real estate sales in 2022 already fell by roughly 40% or more from 2021 and would likely fall even more in the future. In China's increasingly sluggish economy, people are making less money and spending less.
They have no expectations for the future and are worried that they might lose their jobs and are thus reluctant to buy homes as they see the momentum of falling home prices. 20 days after I bought my home, I lost my job. The last time I posted a video about buying a home, many of my friends commented below that I should be careful about losing my job. I never thought it would be an accurate prophecy. I didn't expect this wave of unemployment to come at such a fierce way. My workplace expanded very quickly, from 200 people on the first floor of the office to more than 4,000 people at its peak in just two to three years. At one point, we heard that the company would go public. We all hoped that after the company went public, we could go from having one day off a week to two days off a week. However, we didn't get a double day off but got fired. First of all, several floors of the office building which had been expanded for only a few months, were all eliminated, and the probationary employees were persuaded to leave without compensation. Those who had already passed the probational period were not offered a permanent job. Through the manipulation of the management, the employees were forced to resign on their own. The management said, if you resign now, we will still pay you the full amount. But if you continue to be in the company, the subsequent salaries would definitely be in arrears, and there is no guarantee that we can pay you. In this atmosphere, everyone is very upset. Most of my colleagues are worried that their salaries might be owned later and they won't get it at all. I chose to quit and leave. I don't want to drag on meaninglessly, so I submitted my resignation which was approved in only a second. I had just bought a home with a monthly payment of 18,000 yuan or US $2,600. Before I could even pay the mortgage, I lost my job. <laughs> My husband lost his job. Yes, he lost his job again. When he told me the news, I was a bit overwhelmed. I immediately thought of the mortgage and living expenses, which added up to 8,000 yuan a month, or US $1,164. I have been out of work for a long time, but in the face of my husband's unemployment, I could only assure him that it was okay, he could find another job if he lost it. When we reach the middle age, we have aging parents and young children to support. In between, we have the mortgage and the pressure of life. Now we have to face the pressure of unemployment again. I'm 35 years old, and suddenly I'm at the lowest point in my life. I've been laid off, and I'm still paying my mortgage of 15,000 renminbi, or 2,200 US dollars a month. I feel like my midlife crisis has come out of nowhere. Now I'm looking for a job, looking for a job, and looking for a job. I have been looking for more than three months. At first, I thought it might be my problem, but as time goes on, I think it's not my problem, it's society's problem. Despite the government's every effort to encourage people to continue to buy homes and to keep housing prices from falling too fast, more and more people are waking up to the fact that buying a home requires a mortgage, which means being a slave to their homes. Many people are not only not buying homes, but they are also paying off their mortgages early to reduce the cost of living for their families. It can be said that China's real estate is almost on the verge of collapse, and both the government and the industry are worried.